Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our monthly meeting. Um, so let's start with any introductions. Do we have uh, any new people who would like to introduce themselves? Good morning. My name is Vincent Montgomery. I just joined the city of Fresno as the uh, planning manager for housing and homelessness and uh, came from Fresno, so I'm happy to be here. Well, welcome, Vincent. Okay, um, this is Wes White, uh, Salinas Monterey County Homeless Union co-president, also part of the lead committee. Um, and I uh, just wanted to throw out there that um, uh, we've got some uh, Salinas candidates who are actually um, uh, stating that they want to stop the sweeps and also um, start a homeless, uh, a homeless committee with the city of Salinas to actually redirect, uh, you know, finances and, and uh, you know, see real working solutions from the people actually experiencing it. Um, you know, we did have a uh, administrative procedures in 2016, which was part of a court case win to, to make the point moot, which gave them the clearance to, to clear out Chinatown. Uh, but they were supposed to follow steps two through seven, and they just jumped to step seven. And uh, the two to six is, is, is where we're going to find the, the real solutions, as well as our you know, position paper on sweeps. Uh, Wendy Root asked you as well. Uh, she also said that, um, you know, we had no beds. Um, so we have a lot of champions out there that, that, that we need to coalesce and, and get our message out. Thanks. Um, so that was a nice segue, Wes. Um, here at the coalition, uh, we've been uh, talking about our response to sweeps, and it's not been focused on trying to stop them. It's been focused on how we can constructively and collaboratively uh, deal with those when they do occur. And so it's, we're calling this a solution set. It's intended to be uh, a cross-agency collaboration. The question being, what can we do better together with better and more communication and collaboration and some kind of a framework of how all that works? Uh, we have met as a board and had some discussions on this. We do have a two-page summary document of what we'll call the framework of this solution. Um, we, we're thinking we need to put a little more meat on the bones before we release this and, and get all the agencies uh, aware and involved. Um, but it is coming along, so we're feeling encouraged by that. We will continue that conversation in our board meeting today, and I'll continue to report out on our progress. Well, then let's go into member updates. We'll start from the top access support network. That's Cecil. Hi, good morning everyone. This is Gina. I'm in the meeting along with Judy. So we just have a few updates. Um, we are serving right now any consumers under that calling for community supports and housing navigation. For Monterey County, we're serving over 100 individuals under calling, And we're also serving about 40 clients, consumers for Santa Cruz County. We are working on expanding Cal Lane for Seminole County, so we are taking referrals for Seminole County. So if you have any other partners in Seminole County uh, knows anyone that can benefit from CISO services, we are more than happy to assist them. We do have a full-time case manager stationed at the EDD office or American Job Center in Seminole County in Hollister. So um, again, we're taking referrals for Seminole County for any services, as is the technology, Brain injury, independent living services, housing navigation, housing support. So if you know anyone that can benefit from the services, please let us know. And that's it. Thank you. All right, Gina, thank you. Let's go to Chispa, City of Salinas. Morning, this is San Francisco Rambila. I'm uh, uh, the um, uh, management analyst for the City of Salinas and Housing Division. Uh, and I just want to introduce um, Vincent Montgomery. He's going to be a new uh, planning manager uh, in the housing division, so he's going to be a uh, regular attendee of this, uh, this meeting. I think on the um, uh, update, uh, I think the major update was that uh, the share center started uh, operations now with the community human services. Uh, um, as you know, uh, the share center is, uh, is uh, the funding for the operations has been uh, it's been done by the city and the county in uh, collaboration, but. Uh, I uh, think the main thing is for me to introduce uh, Vincent. So, uh, Vincent, if you want to, uh, uh, you know, say something about yourself. You know, I just uh, introduced myself, but uh, just to kind of take it a little bit further, um, I, I, Greg, the discussions that you guys are 
happening regarding outreach and, uh, you know, um, and CAPEX. I know there's discussions that are already happening with uh, PD as well as uh, our new city manager. And so we're certainly open to, you know, uh, engaging in those discussions further and coordinating with you guys to develop maybe an ongoing meeting to really talk about how we can come up with the same or a um, a message, a consistent message, because I think the populations that are being impacted the most and don't really know what, you know, what, what is going on with the city or the county. So, yeah, we're certainly open to those types of discussions going forward. Good to know, Vincent. Thank you. Francisco, do you have anything else? No, no, not at this point, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, community Homeless Solutions, I have no updates, so we'll go ahead and uh, go on to Community Human Services. Buenos dias, everyone. Floor here again, I've been in for Evangelina, so a couple of updates. Any, uh, we, we have several positions still open and needing to be filled for any additional information. Uh, please visit our website. Safety Place Youth Shelter, we are currently still open six nights out of the week. Um, and we have seen an increase in utilization over the last couple of weeks by our clients, which is great. But for the Safe Place Navigation, Navigation Center in Salinas, it is doing great. And our clients are definitely becoming more familiar with our center there and actively utilizing the center. All street outreach uh, counselors and programs have been busy assisting multiple clients with their appointments to receiving uh, their vouchers by the event hosted by Hakam, which is great. At Chumar House, we have five single women beds open and one family room open. We have intake scheduled to uh, fill the, these vacancies. Uh, two of our single women have also received their housing choice vouchers, yay. Uh, and a new bilingual case manager has been hired to fill in the previous vacant position there. For Casa de Noche Buena, we currently have four single women open beds and one of our families has an appointment to receive their voucher as well. Uh, as of September 1st, CHS has taken over operations of the Share Center, so very exciting stuff. Uh, so the last two weeks have been focused on making sure we complete um, intakes with all of our guests there, and we hope to finalize that by this Friday. Case managers here are also busy with uh, assisting clients through these voucher appointments hosted by uh, ACAM, which is really exciting stuff to hear that all our programs are busy with this stuff. And then uh, our partnership with Dorothy's Place provides us with two case managers, uh, which is great. It eventually wants to make sure I share that Mike, Itzel, and Misty fit right in into our operations there. And uh, for Safe Passage, we currently have one uh, mail bed open, which we are looking to actively uh, fill. And for any questions related to Safe Passage, I will still be the point of contact. I know we have a couple of events coming up uh, for Community Human Services. So uh, I believe Party with a Heart fundraiser for Schumann Heart House, uh, which will be held October 6th uh, in Pebble Beach. And we are planning an all staff training day in October. And there is a, I believe it's Dan's Dream Winery. So 10% of all wine bottle sales will be donated to uh, Community Human Services. For any further details, uh, Evangelina or Janine would be your best point of contact for these events. And those are our updates. Thank you so much. Thank you, Flor. Uh, let's go to Dorothy's Place. Good morning, everyone. Jill Allen with Dorothy's Place. I don't have much of an update, but I do have an important announcement. We recently received a California Department of Healthcare Services Path Cited Grant and we're using that to create behavioral health peer support specialists um, for our CalAIM services. So we are currently looking for, to fill a couple of positions, we're looking for people with lived experience with homelessness, behavioral health disabilities, and incarceration. They don't have to meet all three points. Um, but the, uh, the people that we're looking for are those that can reliably perform in positions as peer counselors in which they will receive a lot of training and a California state certification. These are not posted on our website yet, but will be soon. Any interested parties that you might know of can reach us by emailing info 
at dorothysplace.org. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Downtown Streets team. Hi, everyone. Jocelyn Curran here from Downtown Streets team. No substantive updates. We are super busy at the Hackam event this week, which has been really exciting, and we'll be at the HRC Landlord event next week, and we're just kind of busy, business as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, Eden Housing. Okay, gathering for women. Good morning, Stacey Azula Perkins here. A couple of updates. We are still continuing to be incredibly busy, about double what we were in June. I'm not quite sure still yet what, what the uptick is, but it's a little alarming. Um, we have several positions that are going to become available. Check our website uh, later this week. We also have two events coming up. We, one is Friday from uh, 5 to 7 at Venture Gallery. It's an art exhibit from local artists as well as our guests. And on October 10th, we have our 10th anniversary reception, Taste of Monterey, 5 to 7. Um, both of those you can check out on our website, and we've been really uh, grateful to be able to participate in the Housing Authority event this past Monday. Um, that's it for me for today. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Speaking of the Housing Authority, let's go there now. Well, I, I guess we don't have anyone there, but I do want to mention for them, um, they are in the day three of their three-day event at Sherwood Hall, wherein they're trying to issue 1,000 vouchers. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to go over there yet and participate, I would highly recommend that. Okay, let's go to Housing Resource Center. Good morning, everybody. Alexa Johnson here. Um, HRC did also have a few staff members joining in um, for the voucher event. Um, I heard that it was um, pretty busy and chaotic in a good way, getting people in and hopefully getting people connected. Um, HRC also has our landlord workshop, as Jocelyn had mentioned. Um, for our Salinas and uh, Peninsula landlords, whether they work with other homeless nonprofits or they're just considering it, we're doing a landlord workshop with them over at the Pacific Grove um, the community center, 515 Junipero Avenue. And um, so we're really hoping that we can maybe get some new landlords, hopefully increase the housing inventory for all of our folks um, in some of the existing housing that's already available. And we are excited that we were accepted into MC Gives. So for our Hops for Housing event that we are going to have on December 13th, we're really excited to be able to use that event to raise funds for our MC Gives campaign, which we use to help increase our funds for our landlord program. So uh, really looking forward to trying um, to really engage in uh, landlords in our community and uh, hopefully get people housed as a result of it. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Alexa. Let's go to Interfaith, Interfaith Outreach of Carmel. Dear Barbara Dickinson, uh, we have a couple of exciting things that I may have mentioned them last month too, though. We have our grant applications due on 930. We've had a really good uh, fundraising year. And if you have questions, remember we focus on providing housing. And so you could um, contact our office or at the um, website and talk to someone about how maybe your organization could uh, benefit from a grant, like how you could fit into our requirements more. And then also we have um, our, this month we have our 14th anniversary uh, going on at our Journey Hands Benefit Shop, and that will also help raise additional funds for this year. And then on uh, the 26th of this month, on a Saturday, we have our devotional Food for the Soul at All Saints Episcopal Church and its Interfaith. And uh, I would encourage you to participate in any of those. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Let's go to Anna. Good morning, everyone. Sophia Kier here from Interim. Um, let's see. For our HUD COC properties, we have three vacancies um, at Sandy Shores, and we're working with the coalition through the CARS referrals. All of our other properties are fully occupied, which is great news. Um, I'd also like to remind you all that Omni is open daily um, and that they have lunch served at around 12.15 p.m. And that address, again, is 339 Pajaro Street. I'd also like to extend an invitation um, to 
everyone to our annual fundraiser, The Hoedown. It will be on Thursday, October 17th at 5.30 p.m. at 104 West Carmel Valley Road. And uh, the invitation can be found at interiminc.org backslash events. And I'll post the link in the web, um, in the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Sophie. Let's go to Meals on Wheels, Monterey County, or Monterey Peninsula. Okay, mid pen housing. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think the only um, announcement I would share here is that we do have a vacant case manager position over at um, Moongate and Salinas. So if you have any folks that you think are interested, please do refer them over. It is a case manager position, again, at Mooncate in um, Chinatown in Salinas. And that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Monterey County Department of Social Services. Good morning, everyone. I just want to give a brief uh, heads up. Uh, inclement weather season will soon be here. And so our department and our team are working on some of the preparatory tasks for it. Uh, but it does start November 1st. So uh, many of you on this call have been gracious to participate in our inclement weather response. So I'm sure I'll be uh, contacting you all soon. But just kind of want to give you the heads up. Um, it starts November 1st. It runs to the end of March. All right, thank you, Alex. Uh, let's go to Monterey County Office of Education. Hi, good morning. Um, the only announcements that I have, uh, we have been fortunate to receive a donation from an organization called Housing for Kids, and we will be able to help people with a deposit to get into um, a rental space, and so... If you have any families, they have to be homeless uh, children and youth families, uh, please let us know and we can start the process working with them. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. San Benito County Health and Human Services Agency. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just one announcement, uh, very brief today. Uh, we have the, the program manager position of of homeless and housing programs here in San Benito County, what we are doing is creating uh, this position to oversee the county's uh, housing and program um, and, uh, homeless services under one roof, um, and, and does include those from public assistance and social services that are related to housing and homelessness. So uh, this position will oversee the agency's uh, housing and homeless programs. Uh, Katrina, I will send it to you if you could help distribute to the network. I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Enrique. Mm -hmm. Sun Street Centers. Help Housing at Pueblo del Mar has eight units built, four families and four units with single single people sharing rooms um, or sharing the units and we are waiting on Housing Authority to release a few more units so we can continue to bring people in. We do have a waiting list and the referrals are coming from Monterey County Behavioral Health to us and then we have uh, the new um, sober living in Hollister that will also accommodate women with children downstairs and single women upstairs and we're just getting the house fixed up and they'll be ready for moving October 1st and so far we just have one mom and her son moving in so there's, there's space there. And all the other SLEs, two in King City, two in Salinas. And, um, Salvation Army. Uh, yeah, we just have a couple of updates. Actually, no, I just one at this point. But we had last time we came on this meeting, we had mentioned we had two openings uh, in our housing department. Thankfully, we've identified some candidates for that that we think are going to be really great. Um, but what's part of that, and the good news that goes with that, is it means we can bring a couple of units online that we haven't been able to fill because we just didn't have the staffing to adequately um, uh, do the case management with them when they go through. So that will be happening hopefully in the next few weeks, and then we'll be. Um, fully filled in all of our units. Thank you. Veterans Transition Center. Good morning. Uh, the only thing that uh, we'd like to report is that uh, 
In our 26 years, uh, we are still fully occupied in all 107 beds, which really is uh, kind of unique for the last uh, month or so. Uh, in addition, uh, we plan on uh, the official opening of Lightfire Village, an addition of 70 more units uh, in January and on schedule. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Last but not least, YWCA. Good morning, everybody. We are still continuing to provide support to victims of domestic violence. We have seen an increase in referrals. Um, thank you to partnering agencies that have been sending any. If there's anyone that you may need the help, please feel free to connect with me as I review the referrals. Um, second, right now, uh, we do have a single room available for one for our DV shelter and this, another room for a family for our transitional housing. Um, and we have been working with coordinating a walk in South County for DV awareness. I'll go ahead and drop the flyer in the chat for everybody if you, anybody is interested to come and support. And that's all I have today. Thank you. Katrina is giving, and this will be an overview of the County of Monterey 2024 census results, the point in time count. So um, this is going to be the presentation that was shared. This came out on September 5th. So that um, we want to make sure that you all are fully aware of what has been taken place. So uh, this activity is led by the Coalition of Homeless Services Providers um, as the lead, COC lead, and we partnered with uh, local governments, community-based organizations, volunteers, and uh, to complete the 2024 unsheltered count. Um, the data was collected and compiled by our consultant, Applied Survey Research. So if you're not aware um, why we do this, um, it's a requirement of HUD. DOCs are required to do this activity at least every other year. Some communities choose to do it every year, um, but our COC currently does it every other year. The data collected helps us um, determine the level of federal and local funding that COC receives and accurate counts help us to better align um, our resources to meet the needs of the people experiencing homelessness. Uh, understanding the scope of nature of homelessness helps COC design and implement effective programs and services, and the data helps us uh, evaluate the effectiveness and identify any gaps. These counts provide uh, crucial information for policymakers to make informed decisions about homelessness prevention and inter um, in, in strategy interventions. Um, accurate and up-to-date data helps raise awareness about homelessness issues to the public and the stakeholders, fostering support for necessary actions and policies. By conducting point in time counts regularly, uh, COCs can track changes in homelessness over time, allowing for better trends analysis and adjustments to strategies as needed. So this year, we conducted our unsheltered, our sheltered count on midnight on January 31st. So it's like you go to sleep on January 30th, so this is kind of wrong. So on January 30th, everyone went to sleep, and it's now the 31st. Um, service providers administered a snapshot of the housing inventory count, or HIC, which is the total number of beds and units available in their program. And then the point in time, shelter count, um, or PIC, um, of those occupying those bed, beds or units at that time. So this activity is conducted every year as the unsheltered count is conducted every other year. So the, the report that you're getting is a is combined of multiple activities, the sheltered count, the housing inventory count, the unsheltered count, and then we have our census data. So I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, at daybreak, so when the sun started peeking out uh, on January 31st, 200 plus volunteers to include um, service providers, community members, city and county staff um, hit the streets to deploy from 
two deployment centers, one in Seaside and one in Salinas, to, to count the unsheltered, those unsheltered in Monterey County. Um, from January 31st to February 27th, uh, surveys were administered by those, um, those with lived experience to those experiencing homelessness. Um, 374 surveys were administered. So jumping right on into our data, um, our 2024 point in time count revealed that the total people experiencing homelessness in Monterey County is 2,436. So this is again, those sheltered and unsheltered, that combined total. And you'll see here that 553 or 23% were sheltered and 1,883 or 77% were unsheltered. This is an overall increase from our 2022 count by 19%, equating to 389 people. So like I just mentioned, there was 375, uh, 74 service administered by those with lived experience. Um, those folks that were administering the surveys were paid $20 per completed survey and was paid on, the, on submission of those completed surveys. So survey respondents were incentivized with gift cards to complete the survey. So looking more into our data, um, our 2024 results show that those experiencing chronic homelessness increased by 19% um, from 2022. Our veteran homelessness decreased by 5% in tw from 2022. And our family homelessness increased by 5% from 2022. Um, looking at our youth homelessness, it was a decrease of 3% from 2022. So I know here you see we have 2019 through 2024, but I was giving you the highlights of um, our last pay count in 22 to our current. So our surveys respondents reported, this is all self-reported, uh, majority of the respondents were between the ages of 34, 35 and 44. Um, but I would like to draw your guys' eyes to these combined totals of those from 45 to 64. That is a uh, combined total of, no, 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 yes, of 24% that is experiencing homelessness in Monterey County. So we're seeing, I'm sorry, it's the 55 to 65 percent, uh, 55 years of age to 65. So we're looking at 24 um, percent of our population is 55 and older. 66 percent of them um, identify as male and 23 percent identify as white only, 40% identify as Hispanic or Latinx. And here's the breakdown of the, all of the demographics. So our respondents reported that 81% of were residents of Monterey County at the time they became homeless. And 78% have been experiencing homelessness for one or more year. 23% reported that this is their, was their first time experiencing homelessness, which is a reduction from the 2022 hit count at 38%, and in 2019, 55%. 34% were between the ages of 25 and 39 years of age when they began to experience homelessness. 61% uh, report that finances contribute to their homelessness, and 44% reporting that alcohol or drug use was a, fat, a contributing factor to their homelessness. 79% report that they cannot afford rent in Monterey County. 12% have employment. 54% are looking for employment. And 17% have been in foster care. So 26% of our respondents report that they have spent one or more nights in jail or prison or juvenile hall in the past year. 20% are on probation or parole at the time of their most recent episode of homelessness. 
and 45% report their primary place of habitation is outside. Respondents self-reported that 50% struggle with depression, 40% have substance use disorder, 32% have PTSD, 31% have a physical disability, 25% have a psychiatric or emotional condition, 17% have a traumatic brain injury, another 17% have a chronic health condition, 3% have HIV or AIDS-related illness, 2% have chronic hep B or C, and 52% have a disabling condition. Looking into government assistance, 60% of respondents say they are currently accessing government benefits. 23% are in contact with an outreach worker, 27% believe they do not qualify for benefits, and 19% don't want assistance. 17% do not have an ID to get assistance. So we'll look at the last five pit count um, and the comparison of that data. So we have our total population from 2015 versus 2017. There was an increase of 500 and 29 people. From 2017 to 2019, we dropped by 415 people. And then 2019 to 22, we dropped again by 375 people. In 22 to 2024, there was the increase of 389 people. I would like to note that in 2021, an unsheltered point in time count was not required by HUD um, due, to a COVID, due to COVID, so we reset ourselves in 2022. So that's why you'll see it's not a two-year difference any longer when we get from 2019 to 2022. For housing inventory count, you'll see here that the bed inventory count fluctuates over the years due to maybe funding availability and change in programmatic activities. COVID-19 caused a surge of homeless resources, so we see a huge increase in our bed inventory count. Um, and just noting that housing inventory counts does not include permanent supportive housing nor rapid rehousing beds. So um, in when we look at 2024, we can say we have so many housing, um, rapid rehousing or permanent support housing, and why isn't those things reflected? Um, HUD doesn't count those because those folks are no longer homeless at that point. And then there's the, also the conversion of transitional housing projects to permanent supporting supportive housing projects. So HUD's um, priority shifted from transitional housing to permanent supportive. So as such, our community made those changes as well. Um, also, there was the closure of Pueblo Del Mar that happened in 2022 after our point in time count took place. So that significantly impacted the reduction of beds from 22 to 24 as well. So this is pretty self-explanatory. We have our Orange line um, representing um, the folks experiencing homelessness at a point in time. And then we have our blue line with our housing inventory count. And if you see here in 2022, our the gap starts to close in on each other. More bed equals less folks on the street. So we have to really try to push out for increasing our bed inventory in our community. So here is our point in time by jurisdiction. I really want to call out that um, the cities of Monterey, City of King, Salinas, Soledad, um, Marina have all adopted our legally home plan and are actively addressing homelessness in their cities. Um, in Marina, as I mentioned before, um, there was a reduction in beds in 2024, um, which could be attributed to Pueblo de Mar closing and our Project Room Keys closing um, in Marina. So in Marina, you'll see a huge decrease in those experiencing homelessness because, again, 
these are our totals. They're counting not just unsheltered, but those in that those are sheltered as well because they're considered homeless if in an emergency shelter or transitional housing. So those numbers are wrapped into one. In Salinas, you'll see an increase in um, where there were the delays in our home key project and the sites from room key moving over to Salinas. So that can be a con contribution of why their, their pit count went up. And then the city of Monterey adopted a less punitive policies regarding homelessness and developed a hot team that focused on providing resources and linkages, which could also in contribute to the increase of numbers in um, Monterey. So, some more reasons why we believe there are increases in our community. So, there was an abrupt disruption of services. Um, there was a loss of emergency rental assistance program funded by both federal and state governments of $50 million dollars in March of 2023. So this is after our 2022 pick count. Room key funding ended also in March 2023. And then there was just delays in our home key project, project due to developers. So that's approximately 250 beds that were delayed. The end of eviction moratoriums in 2022 in March after our point in time count. And then again, the conversion of Pueblo de Mar to Hope Housing. Um, so at the time of our point, uh, the last six months of our, our year, um, HMIS reports that there were 92 beds with Pueblo de Mar, but um, historically they have had a higher amount of beds. Anna, can you speak to how many um, beds Pueblo de Mar had um, just usual, like usually at your usual, um, housing inventory count. Yeah. I mean, before COVID there was 52 apartments for families that were available and, you know, different years we get into different numbers and now we'll right. be adding actually 110 beds because since we're mixing families and singles. We have more single shared units now with treatment of before. Perfect. Yes. So that was another topic. So um, roughly, so 52 units times about two bed apartment, right? Yeah. They're two bedroom yeah. apartments. Back then it was a family. So it could be a family of up to five people could be living in those units. Yeah. So huge fluctuation, right? Um, in what it could be based on the family configuration. So um, at the close of 2023, um, we, we estimated about 90, 92 beds um, for Pueblo Del Mar. But with Hope Housing um, currently in process of taking clients, we could see an increase in Marina's um, bed capacity and reporting out um, their, their point in time of 110 plus bed um, in, in the network. Uh, Post-pandemic, it's self-explanatory. You know, a lot of people are adjusting to post-pandemic life. Many households took tremendous loss, and we're still in recovery, but for some, life has permanently changed. And then looking at our lack of affordable housing, you know, we're looking at, the Hackham's Fair Market rent um, for two-bedroom apartments in Monterey County, we're looking at, you know, right here, 3049 This means an individual or family must be prepared to pay 30000 a year to keep roof over their head. And then if landlords are requiring three times the rent, um, this means these households have to be bringing in a minimum of 90000 a year. So this is immediately disqualifying hundreds of households um, where um, agriculture and hospitality is our driving in industry. So no housing equates to more people on the street. But 
The coalition and our partners are committed to continue growing and fostering partnerships with local governments, um, including the service provider network. Um, we'll, we will be actively working to seek out new funding to increase project build and service delivery. Um, there are projects in the pipeline to include a chronically homeless um, project in King City for ind individuals, a tiny village in Watsonville for the Pajaro um, folks that are experiencing chronic homelessness. There's a youth drop-in center that includes rapid rehousing and service coordination um, in, addition, in addition to a permanent supported housing project for parenting youth in Soledad. Several partners are working um, to intercept the home key project in Salinas. Home housing um, is accepting its clients um, in Marina for bridge housing. Interim is developing a permanent supporting um, project, a permanent supportive housing project in Marina. Uh, the County of Monterey is working on a recuperative care project um, for those discharging from Tividad. Um, the COC is ramp ramping up for a national COC build competition um, that's due in the next couple of months for a potential $5 million um, for a permanent supportive housing project. Um, the COC is partnering with the County of Monterey and the Service provi Provider Network to develop a competitive proposal to submit in November. Um, I hope you all stand alongside us um, in not stopping to fight um, to fight the fight in addressing homelessness in our community and the need of the support of local governments and our service provider network to continue to partner up um, and strategically plan and collaborate um, to deter to find another approach in serving the most vulnerable population we have right now. Katrina, what has been the reaction to this information? by the community and the media? I haven't, you know, it's funny. The first day, on the 5th, when I rolled it out, I got lots of phone calls saying that they wanted to set up meetings and interviews. And I had interviews scheduled from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And nobody showed. So I'm seeing some articles come out um, because I invited the press to... To, the, to a presentation much like this, it went so much better. So just have faith in that. <laughs> um, and I'm seeing that they're using the data that was provided and um, the quotes that, you know, I, I shared with them. I sent out the recording to the media so that they can easily tap in and things aren't being misconstrued. Um, I don't see any negative stuff that's coming up, but I'm also not searching for it either. So if someone sends me an article and I'm reading it, but I'm not actively looking. Are you guys hearing anything? I mean, I saw it, on, I think I saw it on KCW, um, and it was a big conversation within our group, and we were actually grateful to get the information. Is it posted on the website? And can yes. I link to it? Can I, in our e-newsletter e next month, can I link to your site and just share it? Absolutely. Uh, let's move on. Does anybody have any stories they would like to share about how they partnered with another agency or more than one other agency? You know, those heartwarming stories of collaboration. Okay, well, think about it for next time because we love those stories. Um, and we will be talking more about collaboration. Uh, we are wrapping up the... 2024 NOFO, uh, we had deliberations on Friday. Thank you to our rank and review panelists for um, spending a great deal of your day with us to get that done. Award letters went out um, the, on Monday. Um, so these are our preliminary awards. It will go to approval um, to the leadership Council on the 25th, I believe. Yes, next Wednesday. Uh, so appeals are open until tomorrow. So any applicant on the call right now, your time 
is taken if you want to appeal. So um, after the Rankin review, uh, we were notified that we actually had additional funding in our bonus um, in our bonus pots. So we have two hundred sixty thousand six hundred twenty three additional funds in COC bonus. And then $225,250.30 in our DV bonus funding pot. So we did send out an interest form um, for folks who are in projects that are interested. These do need to be new projects or they can be expansion projects. Um, and we are requesting that they demonstrate some sort of medical and or housing leverage in order for the COC to get some bonus points within the overall application. And that's an additional 14 bonus points that can really help boost the COC and help us be um, one of those higher performing communities. And when you are one of those higher performing communities, the likelihood that your tier two projects get funded is higher. Not necessarily that it's a guarantee, but that, um, but that more of those projects could get funded if we had a higher and a stronger application. So the interest form is due uh, by 5 p.m. on Monday, and then CHSP will be reaching out to folks. Um, so please be sure to fill that out, um, especially if um, I, I will say like Jill has the new DHCS funding, so she input for an interest um, in expanding that project. So things like that would be really great. And if you can demonstrate that um, that leverage with a letter or something from CCAH or DHCS or um, the housing authority, that would be um, what's needed in the application as well. Um, and then we do have our eSNAPS office hours coming up. So tomorrow is our first eSNAPS office hours. Those emails went out yesterday for projects. And if you need any assistance with that, CHSP and Focus Strategies will be hosting tomorrow from 12 to 1 on Thursday, the 26th, from 1 to 2. And that is the deadline for YHDP applications to be in eSNAPS. So we encourage YHDP applicants to come to tomorrow or Thursday. And then our final um, eSNAPS office hours will be on October 2nd from 9 to 10. Thanks, Nicole. Um did you give the deadline for the bonus interest? Yes, the, the okay. deadline for bonus interest is the 5 p.m. by Monday. So if we don't hear from anybody by then, um, we're just putting out their CHSP will be applying for um, HMIS funding through the COC bonus. And we really want to make sure that these funds are going to the service providers that are boots on the ground doing the work. So if you're able to expand your project, um, please contact us, submit an interest form, um, and we'll walk, get you through the process. Yes. So we had put out an interest form for the COC builds, which is a brand new HUD NOFO that will be awarding 25 communities throughout the entire country. Um, so we put out an interest form. We got three projects who are very interested in participating in that, and we will be conducting introductory meetings with those three groups um, in order to gauge where they're at um, and help them to understand exactly what the process will be. And then CHSP will move forward from there with, if necessary, a local competition. Um, and then moving forward with whoever is selected uh, to get in that application by November 21st. And that that is when that is due to HUD. So it's super quick turnaround um, in this, but we're working with focus strategies so that um, whoever uh, is submitting for this, for this project, um, we have consultants to help them through it as it's, extremely competitive. They're only taking, what, do you said 24 applicate, um, projects for the whole United States of America. So um, we really want to make sure that we put our best foot forward. Um, so we're dedicating our time and CHSP's resources to make sure that we can move a competitive application forward um, in hopes of bringing a permanent supportive housing project into our community.
another permanent supportive housing project in our community. So, also we just want to let you know that we will be doing the um, San Benito County um, census presentation next month. Um, we want to roll it out to that county first before we put it out in this, this space. So, something to look forward to. Thank you, Thank you Katrina and Nicole for that update. Um, so that's it. It's a wrap. I want to thank everyone for your participation here and, and what you do every day to support our community. So thank